Hi, I'm going to show you how to set up for the molar gas experiment. When you go down to the storeroom, one of the things that you will receive is a vial with your chemical in it. First thing you want to do is weigh this chemical. So get a clean, dry test tube out of your drawer and take it into the balance room. You need to weigh this while it's empty. Write that weight down. Pour your chemical into the test tube. You set it carefully on its side like that. Then you can re-weigh it with the chemical in there and write that weight down. You'll need a bar stand and a clamp and a Bunsen burner. Set up the test tube and the clamp like this. You want to clamp the test tube near the top and have it at a slight angle. The Bunsen burner will go underneath like that. We're not going to use this right away, so just set it to the side for now. I'm going to be following along on the procedure in your lab manual step by step, so you might want to follow along in the lab manual while you watch this. First step, it says fill the flask in the beaker about two-thirds full of tap water. Get a large beaker, put about some tap water in that, here's the flask, I put some tap water in that. This is your gas displacement unit. Put it into the flask firmly. You don't want it to pop off or leak gas during your experiment. This end will eventually go in the test tube, but not yet. So just let it lay here. In step two, it says make sure the clamp is open. This is the clamp. The way it works is you can pinch it and it will open it up. The tubing will go in here. I can release it and it will pinch the tubing shut. So right now, what I want to do is I'm going to put this on this tubing and I'm just going to hang it there on the flask for now to keep it out of my way, but I still have it handy. So it should not be pinching the tube yet or anything. It's just hanging here on the flask. This end, I'm going to put into my big beaker of water. Step three says blow air into the rubber stopper end. I'm trying to remove air bubbles out of this tube. The tube between the flask and the beaker right now has air in it. I want to fill that up with water. The way to do that is I'm going to blow air into this rubber stopper end. Now, I don't want to put my mouth directly onto this. Obviously, it's probably dirty. So what you do, you cup your hand around it like that. So my mouth will actually just touch my own hand. I want to make a good seal so I don't leak a lot of air out while I blow. And I'm going to blow into that. Now, you have to blow really hard, like you're blowing into a tuba. Otherwise, it won't work. So take a big breath and blow hard. What you're watching for is you should see a bunch of air bubbles kind of going glug, glug, glug out of this uh, opening over here into the beaker of water. That's what I was looking for. When I see those air bubbles, that's a good sign. That means I'm blowing the air out of that tube. I'm going to blow one more time really hard just to make sure I get all those air bubbles out of there. So this time when I blow, I may or may not even see any air bubbles, but let's watch and see. Okay, looks like that's pretty good. Step four, it says raise the beaker with your hand to reverse the siphon. This is just a check to make sure that this tube is full of water and not air. So if I lift this beaker up, you can, the water should flow back up into the flask. I don't see any air bubbles. That's good. Set it back down. The water is now flowing back in the other direction. What I'm looking for here is the absence of air bubbles. I don't see any, so I'm probably set up okay. Step five is... Um, it says raise the beaker to get the water level up into the neck of the flask, then close the clamp. In order to do this, these clamps are a little tricky to use. You've got to get it ready. So I'm going to open this clamp up, slide the tubing in there so that I'm ready to clamp it shut when needed. So I'm going to hold it open with one hand, and I'm going to hold this beaker up with the other. The water should rise up into the neck of the flask. 
when it gets about one fourth to half the way up the neck, I release that clamp and it pinch that tubing shut and it'll hold that lip level right there for me in the neck. Okay? That's step five. Step six says attach the test tube to the rubber stopper end. My test tube's already set up and ready to go. Only now do I put the rubber stopper in here, push it in firmly, maybe with a little bit of a twist. Again, you don't want that popping out in the middle of the experiment when you're heating it. Okay. Now, on to step seven. This is a way to equalize the pressures. This is a step that confuses students. But what we're trying to do is equalize the outside atmospheric pressure with the pressure inside that flask. So the way to do that is, if you read step seven, it says open the clamp, raise and hold the beaker beside the flask, line up those water levels visually, and then reclose the clamp. Right now, the water level in my flask is right here. The water level in the beaker is down here. They're like this. I'm going to raise that beaker up. So the water levels line up, and then I'm going to shut that clamp at that moment. So here we go. So I am opening the clamp to allow water flow. I'm going to hold that beaker up here. I just eyeball it, line them up visually, and I reclose the clamp. That was step seven. On to step eight. It says, empty the water out of the beaker, just pour it down the sink, put your glass tubing right back in there. It says, open the clamp. I'm going to open that clamp and just hang it out of the way again. So I'm opening the clamp, just put it away, put it to the side. And it says, only a few drops of water should flow, if any. So if I look at my beaker, I have just a couple, few milliliters of water in there is okay, and then it quit. That's fine. That's, that's the way we want it. If your water keeps flowing, at this point, something's not set up right. The pressures are not equalized or there's a leak or something. Okay? So it says, if this doesn't work, start over from the very beginning. You have to follow each step in order carefully. It should work. Okay. Now, at this point, it says get your apparatus checked by a proctor or the instructor. Go ahead and have them check and make sure it's set up right, and then you can go ahead and start the rest of the experiment, which basically is just heating this. You will actually have this set up inside your fume hood. So, like the Bunsen burner, heat it, move it around like this. You should see the actual oxygen bubbling out of the reaction mixture. The oxygen is going to travel through the tubing and do its thing. You should see the water level in the splash dropping and the water level in the beaker rising as the reaction proceeds. Once the reaction is complete, there's one more step you need to do. It says um, after the reaction is complete, leave it as is and let it cool to room temperature. Then we need to equalize those pressures one more time. So I'm just going to illustrate what it might look like to you when you're done. When you're finished, there'll actually be some water in this beaker that's been displaced from the flask. And the way to equalize those pressures is to do this. You may have to lift the flask to equal the beaker, or you may have to lift the beaker to even it out with the flask. But I'm going to get my pinch clamp ready. Okay? I'm holding it open. I'm going to do that lining thing up visually again, and then shut the clamp. That water in there now is exactly the amount of water displaced by the oxygen gas. That water is your volume of oxygen gas. Once your clamp is closed, you can measure this with a graduated cylinder and um, go through the rest of the experiment to finish it. Okay. I hope that helps you understand how to set up the apparatus. Good luck.